A or B. It's not the binary solution to this, is it most certainly spans this spectrum of uh, this hockey and people getting along and coming together to enjoy something and watch something. It's, it's beautiful and it's uh, and I really hope that some, some of these people who go to these games are sharing these moments together and they're getting up and cheering when their team scores and it's great but this is the pl- like the positive side of the scale and like most certainly as you slide back things get a little bit away towards this and I, I don't know if I have an example for this but I wonder what this middle ground is maybe it's uh, the middle ground is roofing companies kind of trying to uh, outbid each other for this uh, this job and on this other side of this scale of competition is you probably get a little bit towards uh, some very shady things of people making sure their goods are coming to them in a really low and cheap manner so democratic governments are overthrown and have dictatorships in place in them and like the competition has most certainly now deprived people of their life, freedom, happiness, anything like that, but to go from people enjoying a hockey game to a dictatorship <laughs> is, I, these are only just an, as an arc of this that I've just given, but what a fucking thing of madness like that this is, but I think that some competition is absolutely good and just so long as it's healthy and happy and people are abiding by the rules is absolutely yeah we we need it but we need cooperation also quite a little bit more than the competition like the competition should be the thing that is happening under the umbrella of cooperation because when competition starts to surpass under this umbrella of cooperation is I feel that it can run off to other things which are dangerous and poisonous for people in our society mm. and I, it's it's kind of surprising sometimes where these roads can lead off to and we kind of don't all kind of have a hand in guiding one another it's kind it's quite strange you know? <clears throat> yeah well with that we're officially live Although we're not actually live, it's just recording. Yeah, yeah welcome everybody. Yeah. It's Taryn's uh, Write Some Good. Write Some Good. Write Some Good podcast. It's a pleasure to be here. Yeah, thanks. This is number seven with uh, Peter Hansen himself. Yeah. Handsome yeah. Hansen. Yeah. Oh, well, thank you. Uh, I'd like to begin by saying that uh, I can't remember what episode he was on but uh, I want to say that I can beat up Dylan's dad and we'll see how that goes for me in the near future here but I'm willing <laughs> to play the cards on this Dylan come at me <laughs> but uh please don't I love you <laughs> but uh I, I was I was reading something just thinking about this uh, I'm really off on a tangent here but let's Give just her, see man. where Fuck. she goes I don't quite some time ago uh I, I think it's when the uh the Muslims were trying to storm the city of Constantinople and uh, they had all of these uh, this massive array of uh, cannons that they brought there and they spent like months just bombarding this city and uh, they had these massive fortifications that were out there and as this bombardment continued and some of these assaults were coming in as it gets situation gets pretty dire but they used this spirit of competition found in the city between sport sporting teams to help keep this city going and it's in this way of like the city now has a very clear understanding of who they are and what they need to accomplish so chariot racing in this city at the time was the big thing and I think it was uh, there was a red and a yellow team and these fans are like die hard like take whatever uh, 
you think soccer fans are like pretty hard like leave that concept behind like there was the riots they'd have over these things when like team lost there was like uh, celebrations were amazing but what these two teams did is they these teams left the the chariot racing arena and they went to the fortifications and these two teams would be racing against each other along with their fans to rebuild these fortifications as they were being knocked down because they said we need to keep these fucking walls up man like we got to hold out and because we don't really know what's going to happen if these walls come down and this other army comes pouring through is we need to keep our safety and security and our prosperity and our lives intact yeah, and keep the culture going yeah <clears throat> that's amazing man it's a lot like when we're on the roof and uh maybe james and i getting a little race you know yeah, get a little race going on. and it's great because <clears throat> <clears throat> yeah uh we're all cooperating to for a common goal to get this roof done say mm. and but within that goal all of us are trying to be the man who made it happen, you know? Yeah. And we're racing each other and competing right. against each other. But it winds up... The co- the competition amongst us yeah. results in the roof getting done faster, better, more efficient. Totally. And um, so the, the competition benefits all of us. It benefits the company. It makes the company itself competitive yeah. in the marketplace. And... Uh, people are going to get a good product and because it, it's a it's actually insane how often uh just you know a couple of drinks contracting shows up and yeah yeah fox phones it in yeah. Yeah, yeah it's unreal and people spend thou- tens of thousands of dollars on roofs or or renovations or whatever the case may be and get completely screwed over I mean, there's a TV show called To Catch a Contract. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And thank God they're out there, man, because we need those guys catching those people. <laughs> yeah, and those oh. people aren't playing the game right. They're just yeah. they're just doing nothing but increasing the yeah. the. They skew the whole world a little yeah. closer to evil, you know. And, yeah. But uh, I, I guess uh, this, this whole conversation we're having, and the and, and my personal stance on the matter is that uh, competition and cooperation are present. Pretty much all the time, and yeah. uh, it's every, hard to separate. Like people, people say every action that you take throughout the course of your day is navigated through the path of cooperation or competition, and I think it's pretty interesting. And I almost think like a parallel is a pretty interesting parallel is this this story of Constantinople being under siege and needing these walls rebuilt but that's a great story is the uh the roof is it is someone's health safety and happiness and their their home like once the roof is off is they're in jeopardy and they need people to come and save them and well the amount of repairs we were running all over the place doing after yeah. that ex- that exact thing happened yeah. because of the windstorm and, and mind you too most of the repairs we were doing were not all, but I'd probably guess seventy to eighty percent of them were the result of shoddy roofers not doing yeah. it properly. Oh, no nail lines done, but uh, yeah. I I think about is uh, this three levels of like thinking and like analysis dissection is like the tactical, operational, and logistical. Is the tactical is like we got these guys on this roof racing to get this done but the that's the tactical get the shingles on work it up get the you know, you know all the prep to but the operational is the this woman in this house who needs her roof done and is looking at this company and the logistical is the boss man looking at I need these shingles to come in by this time and I need my guys to be on site by this time and I need the contract to be signed so we can get in there and do work so that I'm protected by this contract and I have some protection for the homeowner so we have an illegal agreement that we can come to because it really is a... 
the agreement does protect the homeowner and the and the business owner like like holy moly man mm. but i I don't think it's necessarily uh even though I draw this comparison as us racing up to get this job done faster so that this person is now under a new roof and they're not going to have their stuff rained on but to kind of drill it seems a little bit ludicrous to be drawing a little bit of a comparison between that and having siege ladders come up to your walls and having to kick them off like we're mm-hmm. certainly not up there trying to well you know it falls into uh i kind of imagine it like a spectrum you know there there are parallels to be drawn certainly i mean but definitely it's not that intense. <laughs> yeah. That's not... Yeah, get the fuck... Yeah, we definitely want the ladder to come up, but no, we're not trying to push them yeah. down. And... <laughs> I mean, goddamn, I, I would like to think we would have a, a hell of a fire under our ass if uh, our if our city was being laid siege upon. Uh, but, you know, damn, that's just so gnarly. I, I just, like I was mentioning earlier, I think you are talking about some other kind of uh, historical conflict before we uh, started recording, but it's just, and, and I get this, uh, I get this kind of awareness when I listen to uh, Jaco Willick's podcast too, because mm-hmm. he's an ex-Navy SEAL and talks about warfare lots and, and battle, and then uh, he reads books and he has old veterans on to like, pilots from yeah, Vietnam yeah. and stuff, and, and the situations these human beings would find themselves in. I have absolutely zero frame of reference for. Yeah, I can't yeah. imagine. I, I, nothing in my life that I've ever experienced, it all pales in comparison to active warfare on the front lines. It just boggles the mind. And, and then you hear about these stories of men, mostly men, I'm sure there's women, through history too. Uh, in fact, my girlfriends have been enlightening me quite a lot about uh, the history of... Uh, Oh, women Viking warfare. war, female Viking warriors, man. You would not want to tangle with any of them. No, yeah. But uh, the, these human beings, I'll say, in situations that just, again, you know, you just you're left absolutely aghast to imagine, and yet remaining composed, remaining calm and centered, and being able to lead their men through to victory yeah. and. It is astonishing. And then I think about the things that I encounter in my everyday life that make me feel like I'm not going to make it through this or I'm not going to pull this off or yeah. I can't do this. And yeah, it just makes shit. me feel like, holy shit, it's just, I probably have no idea what I'm capable of. And I don't want to sound uh, boastful or, or, or naive or, or I don't want to overestimate my capacity for things. But for me, those stories are inspiring because those are other human beings in those situations and they are able to persevere. And yeah. so I'm a human being and so I feel like I must have that within me. And uh, and so basically what I take away from it is that I'm perfectly capable of handling whatever comes my way. And uh, even if I'm not, you know, I don't yeah. see how yeah. the opposite perspective is useful in the midst of a stressful situation there's no time to think to yourself, oh, God damn, if only this wasn't happening, I sure wish I was just at home right now or whatever, yeah. whatever. You got to handle it. You got to just handle it. And so yeah. hearing these stories of these people handling these crazy situations, I mean, uh, it, you know, I mean, it's tricky because people don't typically like themselves very much, but I, I just think we're we're all capable of so much more than yeah. we can wrap our head around because we just simply haven't seen the experience, so we don't know. Yeah, it's quite amazing what happens like when uh, I like I think about uh, so, so some stuff of like hearing these situations and going like holy crap man I don't know if I could handle that but it's quite amazing what you can do when adrenaline starts pumping and you really realize like this is the situation that I'm in like starting to become truly aware of when those rounds start coming in or uh, I read a, a story about this bomber crew who are piloting this uh there's a b20 uh one of those uh flying fortresses and they're over germany and uh they're going to go and bomb hamburg and as this uh plane is coming up close as uh to the city as they start coming under this flak fire and these mesher smiths are starting to come up to intercept them and these guys are really close and they're like, hey, like, bombardier, get ready to, like, 
basically drop indiscriminate death onto this city. 